Welcome to Minkunst Hardware. In this video I'm going to tell you about the Runin X99 version 1.2 motherboard that I have tested with all possible settings and many different hardware. Let's start with the specification first. So the motherboard is for the Intel LJ2011 version 3 socket. It accepts Intel i7 and Intel Xeon processors. It has quad-channel DDR4 memory with the support for UDIM and ECC registered games. It has 4 USB 3 ports, 6 USB 2 ports, 10 SATA 3 ports, no SATA 2 ports, 2 4 pin headers for fans and 2 3 pin headers for fans, 2 PCI Express x 16 and 3 PCI Express X1 slots, as well as 1 PCI Express X4 slot for NVMe SSDs. There is also very basic uh, 5.1 uh, audio and LAN controllers. Let's talk about the test results themselves. First of all, the motherboard successfully worked with the Intel Xeon E5 2620V3 as well as Intel Core i7-6800K. I have also tested multiple different RAM configuration 2 sticks by 8 gig and 4 sticks of 8 gig, 2 sticks of 16 gigs per stick. All worked fine. If I install 4 sticks, the memory works in quad channel. If I install 2 sticks, the memory works in dual channel, as expected. The problem started when I tried to use my 32 GB memory stick, which is ECC registered memory and it's rated for DDR4 2666 with configuration 2RX4. The memories are from Hynix, but the system just failed to post. Uh, more precisely, the motherboard was actually trying to load, but it was either going into reboot before Windows starts, or it was hanging when Windows was trying to start or repair the computer. The second problem was USB 3 ports. All of them seem to be working, but when I'm trying to run Crystal Dismark test with the Samsung T5 USB drive, at some moment you, the transfer speed just drops down and the system hands. After a while system restores itself and the speeds are going back and then it goes down again. This is a very bad behavior and I would not like to experience that in my workstation, a gaming PC or just home PC. There is something wrong. Maybe it's drivers, maybe it's not, but I have got all the drivers installed and the problem is still there. USB 2 ports were working all fine. SATA 3 ports all work fine, even though some of them black, some of them orange, all of them are working fine and all of them SATA 3. Fan headers, I didn't test all of them. I only tested uh, the CPU fan header and it works as uh, expected. It is also able to adjust the fan speed according to the CPU temperature. PCI Express X16 both are working and both are working at X16 speed. Unfortunately I don't have expansion cards to test the PCI Express X1 slots so these are untested. The NVMe slot it works and it works at PCI Express uh, version 3 x4 so the speeds are correct the problem is that my motherboard has arrived with a broken mounting screw so i'm not able to secure my ssd drive on the motherboard this is just unacceptable for the motherboard of such price let's move on what's about the features windows sleep mode is working on this motherboard it is known that on many chinese motherboards Windows sleep mode does not work, on this one it works. I have also tried to install Linux, it's working no problem, I was able to install it and I was able to boot into Linux and work from Linux. Booting from an NVMe device also working fine, no problem. The other problem is turbo boost frequencies. Unfortunately my Xeon E5 2620v3 failed to boost uh, to the advertised 2.4, 3.2 GHz speed. We will go into this subject a bit later, but right now let's follow up with the features. CPU overclocking is not existing. 
There are options in the BIOS to overclock CPU, to adjust the clock speed, the voltage, and a bit more. But unfortunately, no matter what I do, everything is just completely ignored for my Xeon E5-2620. Exactly the same happens with RAM overclocking. There are settings to set the RAM speed and some other RAM settings. Unfortunately, there is no settings for RAM timings. But even though the RAM speed is completely ignored regardless of the settings in the BIOS, it's just working at the stock speeds which were designed by the CPU or what CPU supports, that's how the speed, that's what the speed you're gonna get from your RAM sticks. And the BIOS options are completely ignored. With the Intel Core i7-6800K, I've got slightly different picture. Whenever I was trying to adjust CPU overclocking settings or RAM speed settings, the motherboard was just failing to post. No matter what I did, as long as I was trying to adjust the CPU clock speed or RAM speed, the motherboard just failed to post and I had to clear my BIOS settings. VRM thermals performance is, well, hard to say because I'm not able to overclock the CPU to push it to the limits, but I would say it's acceptable. After running a half an hour Prime95 stress test with my 6800K, I was able to touch the VRM head spreader and even hold my finger for a few seconds. So I guess it was 60 to 70 degrees Celsius, which is acceptable. Another quirk is that motherboard temperature sensors do not work. They show some kind of a bizarre values. As you can see on this screenshot, sys tin CPU tin TM pin 5, TM pin 6, TM pin 8 are showing constant values, like the values are not changing at all regardless of the CPU load, and the TM pin 3 is actually changing its values according to the CPU load and the temperatures, but it's showing some very inaccurate values. The minimum value is just 2 degrees Celsius, and I'm running this in a room temperature of something like 20, 21 degrees. This, this value is completely just uh, made up. I don't know how it's get there, but it's there. On the good side, the CPU temperature is reported more or less accurate as I can see. Now, let's talk about the boost boosting problem. I was running benchmarks with my Xeon E5 2620v3 and the scores were well less than I what less than what I would expect. After running and rerunning the benchmarks and getting the same results, I started to suspect that something is going wrong there. So I tried my Xeon on a Dell Precision Tower motherboard. Unfortunately, I don't know the exact model of this motherboard, but it was from a Dell Precision Tower, and I've got much higher scores there. For example, on the Ronin X99 motherboard in Cinebench R15, uh, it gets just 665 points, while on the Dell Precision Tower motherboard it was 797 points. That's quite of a difference. If we move to Cinebench R20, then Ronin scores a bit short to 1500, while Dell Precision Tower scores a bit more than 1800. It's more than 300 points difference. This is just uh, something, something completely wrong here. I started to investigate and see what's going on there and here and I started to run all of the monitoring tools and I figured out that CPU is actually running under advertised clock speeds. It's not even reaching 2.4 base clock, not to mention the boost clocks. In this particular screenshot, the CPU during the Cinebench run is running at 2.2 GHz. I have also seen this CPU to downclock in itself to 2.1 GHz for some reason, but uh, that happens not very often, and usually it was running like 2.2, 2.3 GHz, while the base clock of this CPU is just 
above that is 2.4 gigahertz and it's supposed to boost up to 3.2 gigahertz I started of course to tweak around and see what's going on what I can do about this and I figured out that after installing all the drivers which are coming with this motherboard I will of course link uh, the drivers in the video description so you can download them if you need that I can start Intel Extreme Tuning Utility on this motherboard with this uh, Xeon processor before installing the drivers the utility uh, was refusing to start but after installing all the drivers the utility is actually running the first thing I've seen as soon as I started the utility is that power limit throttling and current EDP limit throttling was constantly saying yes I started to guess that maybe this motherboard is providing way too much uh, voltage, way too much current into the CPU and uh, try to undervolt my CPU using this uh, utility, Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, because BIOS doesn't really work. Uh, the stable, the most stable undervolt I was able to reach with the minus 0 0.15 volts which uh, gave me some interesting results. Let's compare Cinebench R15 and Cinebench R20 results with the stock and undervolted configuration. So in Cinebench R15 we are getting 665 points against 769 points. That's quite a, a bump. And in Cinebench R20 we are getting 1496 points against 1754 points. It's not quite as what I was getting at Dell Precision Tower, but it's getting close to there. This, I tend to think that my theory about the motherboard providing way too much voltage for the CPU, and this CPU is hitting the thermal, uh, sorry, not thermal, but power throttling, is probably right. But you never know, like with this Chinese motherboard, so there might be some other tweaks and quirks that you need to do. So, what's the conclusion? Currently, the motherboard is being sold for 80 to 120 US dollars. I would say this is a very questionable purchase. For people who are looking for a workstation, they need a top notch stability. Maybe not overclocking, but it shall be stable, all the features shall work, and there shall be no such things as broken mounting screws. And for people who are looking for a cheap gaming computer, this is also not an option because the motherboard is not cheap at all and it does not support overclocking, it does not support RAM settings, so you will not be able to squeeze out all the performance of processors such as Xeon E5 1650 V3, 1660 V3 and uh, I would say that it's uh, way better to go with the AMD Ryzen AM4 platform. Now. Uh, for the workstations, you simply can't afford to have such downsides with your motherboard when it's not only not supporting overclocking, it's also not able to turbo boost locked processors such as Xeon E5 2620v3. This is a very low powered, very low clock speed CPU and this CPU is not even able to maintain its clock speeds. This is just not acceptable. This I do not recommend to buy this motherboard. There are some alternatives on the Chinese market for LJ2011 V3. And some of them are Huanan Zhi X99. This is mini ATX motherboard. Another one is Huanan Zhi X99 TF. And the last one is Plex HD X99. Huanan Zhi X99 TF is currently being sold for way too high price in order to be able to justify itself anyhow this i don't think is an interesting option plex hd x99 as far as i know it does not support xeon's uh, version 4 it only supports xeon's version 3 and uh, intel core i7 5000 series does not support uh, i7 6000 series this i think it's too much of a downside and Huanan Zhi X99, the mini ATX board, 
seems to be like an interesting option and I will try to get my hands on it and see what I can get from it if it's better or worse compared to Ronin X99 version 1.2. For everyone who is interested you can find a Geekbench result link in the video description as well as the original bias for this motherboard as well as link to download all the drivers which were coming with this motherboard. Thanks for watching, goodbye.